Hi, Rama. It's week 13, day five of our Bible narrative reading plan. Today we're in Judges chapter 9. Judges chapter 9 tells us the story of Abimelech. We saw yesterday that Abimelech is the son of Gideon and Gideon's concubine. So Gideon, for all the good that he did for Israel, uh, did not live faithfully. He had multiple wives and he had a concubine among his other sins of leading Israel into apostasy. And so uh, Gideon's son, Abimelech, uh, is now the focus of Judges chapter 9. And so we see that Abimelech, the son of Jerubbaal, which is another name for Gideon, he went to Shechem and he went to his relatives and he says, look, wouldn't it be better instead of, you know, Gideon has been king and he's got 70 sons. Wouldn't it be better instead of 70 sons ruling over you? Wouldn't it be better for just one son to rule over you? And somehow he gets the people to agree. And so with the help of these people from Shechem, the Shechemites, uh, Gideon's son Abimelech goes and he kills 69 out of the 70 sons. What a horrific, murderous action. He's in, uh, intending and attempting to kill all of the sons, but we do see that there was one son, Jotham, the youngest son of Jerubbaal or of Gideon, that he had hidden himself, and so that there's one son uh, remaining. And so when Jotham, this, this one living son, hears about it, he goes and uh, he stands on the top of Mount Gerizim and he essentially prophesies to them or he tells them, um, he speaks out to them and he gives them this parable uh, this uh, allegory pointing to the fact that uh, it should not have been this way. This is not the way that you get a king in Israel. You cannot uh, uh, go around or subvert God's plan and path for getting a king. And so uh, Jotham, the one remaining son of Gideon, he summarizes and he says, look, if you have acted in good faith and you've acted in integrity when you made Abimelech king, if you've dealt well with the family of Gideon, who served you so well and did so many good things for you, if you have done well, then he says, um, if you've acted in good faith, verse 19 of Judges chapter 9, then rejoice in Abimelech and let him also rejoice in you. If you've done a good thing, then let it be a blessing to you. He says, but if you've acted wrongly, if you've acted deceitfully, he says, then let fire come out from Abimelech and let it destroy the leaders of Shechem. And uh, conversely, let fire come out of the leaders of Shechem and destroy Abimelech. And we see that what Jotham says actually is what happens. You read uh, this very interesting remainder of chapter 9. You see the battle going on between Shechem and Abimelech. And as one, one commentator wrote that as I was reading, he said they were made for each other. I mean, these people who have banded together to do this evil thing, and now they're turning on one another, and it's just a, a terrible sight. You get to the end of the story. Abimelech has, has attempted to uh, devour, to raid, to defeat all of Shechem. And he's trying to go to this tower of Shechem. And uh, up above him is a woman. Remember in the book of Judges, even as it's not a safe place for women in the time of Judges, when it comes to telling the story in the book of Judges, the women are actually the ones who usually uh, do what's right and actually uh, come to the rescue, who save Israel in a certain sense. And so this woman, she's at the top of the tower and she drops a stone on Abimelech and it crushes his skull. And so he calls, Abimelech calls his young uh, armor bearer over and he says, look, come on, come on, draw your sword and kill me because I don't want people to know that I was killed by a woman. It would be great shame to him as a mighty warrior to have been killed by a woman. And yet for all of the evil that he has done, this is what has happened. Because we've seen that God has not condoned what Abimelech done has done. Abimelech has done evil in the sight of the Lord, and so God has even sent an evil spirit upon Abimelech because Abimelech is not the good and true right king of Israel. He's not the right judge of Israel. And so we get the summary of the story at the end of chapter 9. Thus God returned the evil of Abimelech, which he committed against his father in killing his 70 brothers. And God also made all the evil of the men of Shechem return on their heads, and upon them came the curse of Jotham, the son of Jerubal. So even as Jotham's son, uh, uh, Gideon's son Jotham has told them, look, if you've done what's right, blessings to you. If you've done what's wrong, curses be upon you. And these curses have come to pass. And we see that God has superintended all of this because God is not going to let evil go unpunished. Abimelech cannot subvert God's plan for a king in Israel. This shows us not that having a king is a bad thing because it seems like the book of Judges is pointing us to the fact that Israel needs a good king, but even the good king, David, who will come, uh, is not going to be the ultimate solution. Israel needs the one true king, Jesus Christ. 
And God is blessing Israel, not because of anything they've done, but in spite of themselves, even in spite of the wickedness of people like Abimelech, God has his purposes and he's working and he will ultimately bring the perfect king, Jesus Christ. Here's a summary of today's reading. For more information, go to tunemyheart.org.